Ja, ons gesels van ochtend oor die nietste gebeure in termen van nationale energieverskaffing. Na die Russische kernkracht oor is eers op ijs en een nieuwe 2010-30 plan is voorgestel. Ons verwelkom professor Hartmut Winkler, fysika professor aan de Universiteit van Johannesburg. Good morning professor Good and morning. thank you for joining us thank for this you. discussion. Thank you. The South African Integrated Resource Plan for Electricity was published in November 2016 and has sparked some heated debates. What exactly is this plan and what is its purpose? All right. Uh, a, a government draws up a plan. Uh, it's, it's a roadmap to how they see the energy sector developing over uh, a period. Uh, it, it was previously about 20 years. Now this latest one goes all the way to 2050. Uh, it, it's not absolutely cast in stone. In fact, it's supposed to be updated uh, every two years or so. Uh, this last one has taken a while to come. Uh, but uh, with the many changes that are regularly happening in energy, uh, this is needed. So you do need to actually know what, uh, where is the government, what is, are they looking at? And this is what's going to guide the government. They, this is normally what they're going to support. So if you have a proposal, a project which falls within this framework, it's likely to be supported. If it's not, uh, it probably won't. Mm. What, in your opinion, are some of the plan's key points we should take note of? All right. Uh, first of all, uh, there's been a realization that the growth in energy demand is not quite as high as had been anticipated in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, if one looks at the previous document, they were looking at more or less a doubling of energy requirements over 20 years. Now, we can already see this hasn't really happened. And so also now this, this new document looking forward is, is certainly looking at, at, at lower targets uh, than we originally anticipated. Uh, the other main aspects are, uh, first of all, because there's, uh, the renewable energies, that's mainly wind and solar, have been so successful, uh, these are being promoted a bit more in the new document. Mm -hmm. And the other major aspect is that uh, nuclear energy, while it's still there, and uh, in, in 2050, the the total foreseen for nuclear is, is actually higher than, uh, than originally. It's only intended to come online much, much later. Uh, in, let's talk about 2037, so exactly 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the main implication of this is that uh, one doesn't need to start looking at building new nuclear power stations for a period of probably about 10 years. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. are some of the biggest arguments for and against these points? Uh, I think... Uh, I think especially given that we know so little about how much nuclear energy is going to cost in the end. I think it makes sense to wait a little bit until we actually really know that we need it. And so in, in that uh, sense, it's quite welcome mm. that we've actually, uh, that there is this bit of a delay, that there's no early commitment to what would clearly be a very expensive exercise. So we'd be uh, uh, really delaying this decision for a period of probably about 10 years. Mm. And uh, in the meantime, a lot of things can happen and uh, the, the situation can be reassessed every few years to see uh, if, there's any, uh, if this is still required or, if, or what changes are needed mm. and so on. Uh, furthermore, uh, there's also been uh, such dramatic changes in the renewable energy sector, especially in solar photovoltaics. The prices have dropped dramatically. So uh, this is uh, one we'll have to see, how is this going to continue? Mm -hmm. um, are there going to be technological developments as far as storage is concerned, which is one of the key aspects for renewables, because that's their, their shortcoming. They, they're not on all, all the time. I yeah. went down to the Eastern yeah. Cape um, yeah, in December, and yeah. if you go past Cookhouse, yes. you know, if you go Crater Cookhouse, yes. uh, the wind turbines, that, oh, I stopped counting mm -hmm. at 100. It was just yeah, amazing. Yes, um, and, and I know they're about 20 mil each. Um, so, but it, uh, you know, is it the same storage? Um, and where's that energy going? Where's that electricity that it? Where's that it, that where electricity is being fed straight into the Eskom grid. Okay. Uh, so it, it's it's really being dis distributed throughout the country. Um, so what it means is that while those uh, wind pumps are really uh, operating at their maximum capacity, it means that less uh, coal burning and and, uh, mm. and so on will be required. Uh, so uh, one of the hopes is that uh, when there's a lot of wind, you might not have a, a, as much sunshine. So that they, mm. uh, and, and also, given that we're a fairly large country, mm. it would be very rare to have a situation where the weather conditions are uh, uh, similar all over the country. So the idea is that there should always be some parts of the country which are able to produce solar energy, some parts of the country which are able to there's produce... There's a combination uh, yeah, we're looking right. for. Do you believe yeah. more in the combination of all these sectors um, instead of just nuclear? Mm. Uh, or, yeah, or will yes, you I go so. for nuclear? 
I, w I certainly wouldn't go for nuclear at this okay. stage, especially, I, I mean, the main problem f for, as far as I'm concerned with nuclear is the price. Mm. Uh, the, the numbers that I've seen, mm. uh, and uh, we're talking about a trillion, so that's yes. a million million. Yeah. And uh, uh, that money just isn't there right now. So uh, if one is to build these, I, I think the only way this could be done is by uh, the, the country essentially making commitments to paying back later. So it's, it's mm. like taking on a, a house with a very large bond mm. in, in, in the hope that you're at some stage either going to have a, yeah, uh, be yeah. able to afford it. So right now, uh, I mean, the argument that the pro-nuclear lobby is making is they're saying that we have no other option. Mm. Uh, but I think the, the, this latest plan, which was drawn up by, uh, by experts uh, in the sector, and it's still up for, for comment, by the mm. way, this is not the final document, uh, so once the final document uh, comes out, there might might be some changes to it, uh, but I do not see uh, a massive uh, uh, massive uh, uh, changes. So as a result, I think this conclusion, which by the way isn't really new, yeah. there was an interim uh, uh, plan, which was never uh, promulgated. But uh, there already they were saying, no, let's wait with nuclear, but let's see how. Uh, the renewable energy is going, especially because uh, these were coming up so fast. I mean, yes. you mentioned these these uh, wind farms in Cookhouse. I mean, they came up in record time. They, yeah. they weren't there. Professor, what is currently happening in terms of the politically loaded Russian nuclear energy contract in South Africa? Yes, well, this whole contract has been challenged. Some people are <laughs> saying there is no contract. Uh, so the result has been that uh, uh, some uh, civil society groups have actually taken are taking the government to court to try and declare certain documents. Uh, there's certainly a perception that uh, that the Russians have uh, are in the forefront and that they are the most likely p people to uh, get this contract awarded if it does uh, eventually come out. But uh, there would be numerous uh, other potential uh, uh, countries that could offer the same services. And I think the whole nuclear deal would not be nearly as controversial if it wasn't uh, for this particular build-up. Mm -hmm. It all started with uh, the president uh, making a number of, of trips to Russia. Some of them were not quite clear. Where uh, very soon after that, uh, there was this uh, talk that, uh, the, the, or the, at least the Russians came out, the Russian nuclear agency Rosatom uh, boldly announced that they'd been granted this contract to build these power, nuclear power stations in South Africa. Yes. And... Uh, it's, I think what the way this whole matter needed to be approached, they needed to be very open about the whole thing. Uh, we should have gone and asked all various providers to tell us exactly what they're going to do and how much uh, they propose it's going to cost. Mm. This hasn't unfortunately happened. That in, a, in a sense, they're trying to catch up on that now. Uh, but I think the perception has been now been created that this whole thing is no longer above uh, uh, water, above board. And uh, so it, it's going to be very difficult to sell this to the general public. There's just too much, very a lot of suspicion at the moment. Mm. Now, mm. the IEP and IRP suggest postponing the nuclear energy plan till at least 2037. Yes. But ESCOM has threatened to ignore these recommendations. What is the latest, latest on this? Well, they certainly are issuing out uh, uh, calls uh, for uh, various potential builders of nuclear uh, uh, energy uh, facilities to, to come forward and uh, basically say what they're going to do. That in itself is maybe not a bad thing because then maybe for the first time we can get a real sense about how much, uh, uh, or first of all, what uh, these companies propose doing mm -hmm. so that we can see whether everything is covered or maybe whether things are going to be um, created which we actually don't need or so so we can get a clear picture about what is actually on the table mm -hmm. and then also to see how much that it, it then we can do some actual calculation of what's going to it's going to cost so that in itself would not be a problem but i think the way it's be it's be it, it's being done now also it, it's almost been uh, done as a, as an act of defiance mm -hmm. so in other words uh, escom is really saying no well uh, this plan might say let's wait f until uh, 2037, but we're going to go ahead anyway. And especially a, a company like Eskom, which is in uh, not in the best of financial shape, can't yes. really, shouldn't really be doing this. Mm. Uh, Professor, in an era where the international community is focused on green living and environmentally friendly behaviour, why is South Africa even considering something like additional nuclear energy plants? Yes, it's going against the international trend. And I can understand when a country like, say, Hungary, which has often been presented as a model, uh, Hungary uh, is in the process or has just built some nuclear power stations. They don't have the amount of sunshine we have here. Also, their land is um, 
is extensively used for agriculture. It's expensive. You can't just clear mm -hmm. acres and acres to create a, a solar farm in that there. So there I can understand that there will be some sort of an argument to uh, maybe extend the nuclear facilities because the others are much less of an option. But here, as far as solar and as far as wind, we've got some of the best conditions in the world. Mm -hmm. And also, if you compare the breakdown that you have, even according to this plan that's being put forward now, uh, the total amount that's envisaged of energy that's envisaged to come from, from wind and solar is still only at the level of about 25%. Now, that is not very high by world standards. I think a, a country like this, it's, uh, we could even be talking about 50% mm. coming from those resources. A so, yeah, yeah, I guess so. What I want to ask you, a very yeah. important question, does ESCOM really have the authority or mandate to ignore the key recommendations of the state's plan? Uh, I would say yes and no. Okay, in a sense, well, they are a, a state-owned enterprise, but they are... Uh, they do have their own board and so on, and they can, in a sense, say that if our board decides this is what we're going to do, then this is what's, what's going to happen. But we've just seen at the SABC what that can lead to. Mm. Um, given that the, the, the main shareholders, if you like, is the government and the public, mm. they should not really be going too much out on their own way. Mm. Um, they have the option now of challenging this plan, in a sense, by making a counter-representation and maybe by giving some, some alternative scenarios uh, because this plan was really built on, on various scenarios that uh, determined, okay, this is more or less the amount of energy consumption we envisage by 2050. This is where we see the, the prices of the various technologies going. So this, and so they've tested various options and what they've come up with now is what they thought it was the best. By the way, mm -hmm. the proponents of re renewable energy <laughs> have a whole lot of criticism about the, how this was done as well. They say a whole lot of things were not built into the model, which they should have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm. okay, the, the real answer is probably somewhere in the middle, and uh, mm. I think the plan as a whole as it is now is, is not a bad one. Professor, yeah. thank you so much for joining us for this discussion. This is Professor Hartmut Winkler, a physics professor by the University of Johannesburg. Oh, come on, I think every dock in South Africa was the only dock of solar plant. Mm -hmm. You know, if we just used our roofs. Because I'll talk a hard in land. Bye, bye, thank you for the meeting, bro. Okay, yeah, yeah. Bye, um, you can't skip a play for you. See you here next week in Fikir.